each of us, if we are, the theory says that if we are able to resonate powerfully, taking care of us, understanding our purpose, understanding our primary question, understanding our calling, knowing that there is something beyond the physical, knowing that you have access to it and you can reach into it at any time you choose to reach into it. These things change human beings. It changes them. It really does. Remember I said that when I was first brought into the unit that Fern Gavin sat down and said to me that your life will never be the same. Mm -hmm. Brought my wife in at the time and said, excuse me from the room and said exactly the same thing to her after I got there. He said, your husband is not going to be the same man that you married, that you knew. What we do here is change his perspective on things, and it's going to change how he sees the world. It's going to change how he sees his relationship to you. Not always bad, and doesn't have to be bad, but I want you to understand as the spouse that these changes will occur, and if you support them and acknowledge them and, and or work with them, there won't be problems. But I'm only bringing you in here and telling you this because... Marriages fall apart in this place as this transformation takes place. They do. Most everyone in that, in that place had been divorced once or twice. I think Ed Dames, when he was there, was like six. He was his fourth, fourth marriage when he was there. Mel Riley, two marriages, like maybe three. Paul Smith, two, et cetera, et cetera. So <clears throat> it, uh, it was an interesting thing to be, have your wife told that. It made for a very long, uh, difficult ride home. <laughs> Because she was processing this, like, what the hell does that be? Now, what did you get yourself into? Because and you she, can't say what you're working on. So, you know, like yeah. for all she knows, her mind could go to like, uh, I don't know, like something, something actually worse than what, what you were doing. We, none of us there ever told our spouses what we were working on, but all of us told our spouses what we were doing. Uh, okay. What we were right. being to do. And you do change in that way. When you get to that place in the process where you're no longer quibbling with what's happening and what you're doing, and you see that the amount of data, the volume, and the accuracy of the data you're producing when you get your feedback, that's, there's a, there comes a point. For me, it was like month in the month two, transitioning to month three, um, the, the slight switch went on in me. I mean, I, I just... I just had a session where I, I came out of it and I was like, oh my God, you know, like, oh my God, I, you know, I, I just now, you know, I've had all these little evidences, but now it all codified and snapped together and my brain and my reality altered in that moment. And the difficulty with, with it there uh, was because it was never, you know, researched in at SRI, it was never brought in, you know, there were no manuals, right? So there was no manual for, well, what do you do when this transformation occurs? What do you say? I mean, do you tell them about something? Do you say that, you know, here's ways to moderate how you're feeling right now? Uh, be careful because uh, I'll tell you what it was in slang called. They called it the Messiah complex. Mm -hmm. Now, guys that have been there for 10 or 15 years may not have remembered that, but they called it a messiah complex. It, what it started to happen is if you didn't understand how to temper it, how to gauge it, how to use it and then not use it, like if you just became this awakened and aware bull in a china closet, societal china closet, you just bulled over, the, over people all the time and you started to think that you were wiser and more connected and you know, these horrible things started to well up in you if you didn't catch them and stop them. And I don't want to say that you started to feel more pious than people, but you, you began to feel like you just know more than people and you know that you can't just blurt it out because they don't want to listen. So you, you feel yourself rising above things and you look at people differently and not in condescending ways, but in ways of you don't now know what I know kind of a thing. That also is a bad thing for an army officer, especially, you know, when you go to your next uh, yep. actual access program and worse than that, after you go through commander of staff college and get a master, master's in military art and science, right? Then 
you head to the 82nd Airborne Division and you're looking at people now because it's really, once it, that door is open, once that portal is open, it, um, this connectedness, it never closes again. You don't have enough in your lifetime to shut it off again. And that scares people, right? So now it's there and you still really are not, you're still trying to figure out how to live your life like this because you see and hear things and you seem to like look through the veneer of other people. and uh, which I know you can do intuitively and people can, but I wasn't. And now I was, uh, and so, I mean, I'm dealing with a two-star general who I think is, you know, Mike Steele, who I think is like an absolute arrogant ass. This was one of these generals who had no idea really what he really wanted from his staff. Mm -hmm. He only so knew, he didn't spin. Know, saw it. Right. Yeah. So, he just kept them working, 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 not guidance, just critique. And I don't like people like that. And I don't care how many stars you have on your shoulder. And in the start, same way. Yeah. You start to see and hear things about him. Like, you know, this guy was out on range eight and he stepped in as a battalion commander and changed the, the, uh, the uh, scheme of maneuver for a platoon on a live fire that the company commander, the battalion, the company commander had approved. And the battalion command, you as a battalion commander, change it. And so, just 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 so folks understand who are kind of non-military, when you're on a range like that, you're doing live fire. When you have a scheme of maneuver, you're rehearsing and rehearsing and rehearsing and rehearsing. And when somebody just comes in and just says, "Oh no, change everything," okay, let's see the live fire. Right? That's basically what happened with this guy, right? And a, a young sergeant, you know. Uh, stood up to help maneuver his squad and uh, an M60 machine gunner, you know, put a round right through his back uh, because it was a, it was the wrong scheme of maneuver. It was somebody coming in trying to play tactical expert who hadn't actually walked the range, but was looking out over the train and said, no, go this way and that way. And one of the things that support by fire positions have to do and, or the other squads that are maneuvering, right. They always have to be cognizant, you know this, of like you're a tanker. So you know you have to always know where the other tanks are. Uh, right. If you don't, and something pops up that looks like a tank, you could tear their, you know, take their turret off, right? Kill them. So it's the same thing in infantry in uh, you know, in a in a deliberate attack or contact movement to contact. These are all military terms that describe slightly different variations for which infantry will close with the infantry. I mean, close with the right. enemy. And so he kills this guy. Now, obviously, this guy's connected. So there's a 15-6 investigation, right? And he is exonerated. Not his fault. They didn't do it the right way kind of a thing. You know, he provided good tactical guidance, but they didn't do it the right way. Well, here he is as a two-star general. And I already don't like this guy. And it's a, that's a bad thing for a major promotable to do. <laughs> to not like the two-star. Uh, it's career, career limiting and, uh, yeah, same range. I, well, how I find out about this is the CG comes back. The, the action, the aid goes straight to general, uh, Colonel Caravori, who is the chief of staff and says, this just happened. And he told me not to say, you know, to say that he wasn't there, you know, or some words to that effect to deny certain aspects of what just happened. That was the order from the two star to the, uh, to the captain. That was his aide. Carvori launches into orbit as chief of staff. He too did not like this guy. And I find out from Carvori, he comes to me cause I'm the training officer, which means that the range belongs to me, right? I'm the training division training officer. And he says, uh, range eight, that, that we just had a KIA at range eight, the training accident. Apparently, this guy went to that same range from now Lieutenant Colonel to two star years later, does exactly the same thing and overrides a battalion a commander and a company commander and redirects a new scheme of maneuver. And sure enough, another. And almost on the exact same spot, another 
sergeant stands up and a machine gun hits him right in the back, kills him, boom, dead, just like that. Well, obviously this guy who just got away with it as a lieutenant colonel is like backpedaling out of this thing and uh, ends, up, ends up escaping from this once again, but he didn't escape it from you know, the, the awareness of people who knew what happened before and happened there. Uh, Caravori, Colonel Caravori got very vocal about it uh, to him, uh, as did I. And what ended up happening is when the opportunity provided itself, um, when I, he, he was told I was writing this book, he used that as a way to, I don't know, deflect me by, you know, crushing me. Uh, but right. he also crushed Caravori. There was very few chiefs of staff of the 82nd Airborne Division that did not walk out of there and pin on the star. D damn few, right? Uh, I don't know, 25% of them, maybe. Well, Caravori, the efficiency report written by the guy, because Caravori got vocal, uh, ended his career, Caravori's career. So I could see that in this guy, among other things. I mean, I probably that's probably not a good piece for what we're talking about here. But well, uh, well, it ties into the fact that you're able to cut through kind of the fog of life and see this because. I, I don't know if it's the same capability, right? I, it's just um, because of my ability to analyze data is just the way I would, like I, I run into these sorts of things all the time. I feel like why, why is, why does nobody see this? Or there'll be, again, I'm not going to use, they, they'd select someone for a position and the person was not qualified, had no idea what they were doing. It was obvious to me and you know, I would I'd carry them for for some amount of time, but it would just kind of piss me off because you know they they either make more money or have a higher position, and they don't know what they're doing. And why don't people see through it? Well, I, I mean, what, the same reason, Sean, that this guy pinned on two stars it certainly, in my opinion, wasn't through his capable leadership. Uh, this guy was this guy was truly a prima donna. Uh, jerk. I mean, he, Tony Tata, who was the, uh, who pinned, I think Tony uh, re retired as a major general, but Tony Tata, who was director of plans, uh, I mean, he and Brent, Brent Flanagan and I had coffee every day, every morning uh, until I got in trouble, then they scattered, uh, you know, but Tony Tata said, told me that when the 82nd had plant, you were, were supposed to go to Haiti, right? Uh, and remember that was that thing was in route, and then Clinton called him back. And when President Clinton called him back, uh, Tata told me that uh, that this general threw an absolute, like a fourth grader temper tantrum in the back of the aircraft, like took his Kevlar off and threw it in the back, and it bounced around in the back of the aircraft. The crew chief was like, "What the hell are you doing?" And you know, stomped and swearing and carrying on like because you know he wanted to be. He wanted to be the commander of the 82nd that invaded Haiti. And all of a sudden, that big dream and all that was going to follow with that got chink, pulled, the plug pulled. Uh, I, I think that those kinds of antics and his treatment of subordinates and other people who were, you know, his indifference to those kinds of things ended up uh, grossly shortening his career. He was put out to pasture after that. He became PACOM commander. Which, yeah. So. You know, a lot happened in there, you know. Uh, you well, that, now it's now it's actually I this. Oh yeah, the Indo Indo Pacific Indo Pac now or something. I can't remember, but I mean it's important now for sure, right? But yeah, back then probably not so much. No, yeah. but you know, so be it. And, and I mean, I I saw him doing that. Like in what was he there? He was, he was there. He was a two star general in ninety five. And he was a three-star at Paycom when I was there, like in 2005. Well, that's a big shift not to, you know, not to rise to the top. That meant you were just being cycled in different right. places. And, you know, and, and I, I had, you know, I, far be it for me to be able to know why you know, or what happened. But I'm just telling you as a, as a former officer what I saw in this guy. Uh, and I saw a lot of flaws and that is not a good thing for a, a junior officer to be capable of doing. And I was not good at handling it. 
And I didn't have enough horsepower to be acting like that. And I will admit that I was foolish, you know, I, but I didn't understand how to control it. And I actually didn't understand why it was happening. And I sort of kind of thought that, you know, that that's the way I was supposed to act if I knew these kinds of things, which I know you struggle with because I thought I was doing the right thing. And I thought, but deep inside, I knew I was, I was burning some things that didn't need to be. Well, so you were, you were doing the right thing, but the right thing has a cost. Sure. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like, subscribe, and notification buttons. Additionally, if you have any feedback, please put something in the comments below. And lastly, if you want to watch the full episode of this clip, you can find it above. Thanks again for watching.